More than 500 years ago, Christopher Columbus set sail in three ships looking for a faster route to Asia. He ended up discovering the Bahamas and a new world. Less than 30 years ago, the Columbus Foundation wanted to build replicas of all three ships. Money and time constraints didn't allow them to build all three, so they decided to build the Nina in time for the 500th anniversary of Columbus's voyage. They started off building the Nina. It's one of the most well-known caravels in history. So they built the Nina to be uh, as accurate as possible based on about three or four years of research and uh, took 32 months of construction because it was done entirely by hand. About 12 years ago, the Pinta set sail, but they made this ship a little bigger to accommodate the number of visitors. So they don't get storms like that up north in Spain. It's not the right climate for it. It's not tropical enough. Both ships were built in the same place, Brazil. Well, it's the only place in the world that people still know how to build them, in the same way it would have been built back in the 1400s. Uh, all the hand tools, all the same methods and techniques they used 500 some odd years ago. Uh, these ships were historically, they were Portuguese by design. Today, they are used as floating museums. We try to uh, travel around the country and again, educate the public on what life was like to be a sailor back then, what life was like on board these ships during a crossing of the Atlantic Ocean, uh, and again, on the age of discovery as a whole. Lindy Horton from Crothersville Elementary School in Missouri toured the ships with her class. We are going to learn about Christopher Columbus and how he sailed and why he sailed and how the ship kind of works. Students learn facts about Columbus's different voyages from Tom Vaith. Vaith is a boatswain's mate on the Pinta. And he got to the Bahamas, they got to Cuba, and then they hit Hispaniola, which today we call Haiti and the Dominican Republic. Facts about the ship. That anchor weighs between four and 500 pounds. All right, so it is very heavy, it is massive, and you cannot pull that up all by yourself. I don't care how strong you think you are. I don't care how many vegetables that you eat, it's not gonna make a lot of difference. And how it works. But as this comes down, it's a good large thunk over on this side. That thunk is the break, all right? It's this piece of wood right here. And life at sea. The captain would give the order to cut and run. So basically you're gonna take out your knife, you're gonna cut through the anchor line, and leave it where it is at the bottom of the ocean. Lindy really enjoyed the opportunity to visit the floating museum. I think the reason that they make the boat is so you can actually feel like you're gonna be sailing and like just to get you to feel like you're gonna get ready and it helps you like turn on your brain. One of the things that surprised Lindy was the size of the ship. I was expecting it to be a little bigger, but no, actually it's a little small. Like, back there, there's the Queen of Mississippi, and we, I was expecting it to be big, but no, it looks like a tiny little bitty pirate ship. Third grade teacher Dana Constant had to do a little convincing to get her class on board. When I first started talking about bringing them here, they weren't too interested, but after the videos and the Discovery Education experiences, they um, wanted to come and were excited about it. Even Mrs. Constant learned something new on this field trip. Um, I didn't know that just little children under five feet tall went down below to take care of the animals and dipping out the overspill or whatever they called it. Um, I didn't know that just children did that. And it wasn't just school students who were excited to see the ships. Joyce Brewer also has a sailboat, only hers is smaller. She enjoys the chance to see other sailboats. It's very dynamic. Anytime you can get history and bring it alive, it has a bearing on our life today to help us think about, you know, why we're here, how we got here, what it would have been like if somebody else wouldn't have come across the ocean. Fantastic. When these ships were built, their lifespan was only 20 years or less. But with modern technology and upkeep, the Nina is well past that. Our Nina here will be turning 26 in December, and she's still going pretty strong. After stopping at hundreds of ports, the miles have been adding up as well. The captains would have a better estimate than I do. Um, hundreds of thousands on the Nina. Uh, I've heard between four and 500,000 at this point, uh, which is phenomenal for a ship of this type. 